everybody. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello everyone and welcome to show number 71 of Beatle News Briefs, your home for all the news you need to know and the best talk in the Beatles world. I'm your host Steve Marinucci and we have a full slate of Beatle news today, so let's get to it. Our top story of the day, Ringo Starr officially announced his new album this morning. The album is titled What's My Name, which fans have heard him say on stage during his concerts for years. The 11 tracks on the album are Gotta Get Up to Get Down, It's Not Love That You Want, Grow Old With Me, the John Lennon song, Magic, a cover of the song Money, That's What I Want, that was done by the Beatles, Better Days, Life Is Good, Thank God for Music, Send Love, Spread Peace, and the title song. Grow Old With Me, of course, is the big uh, attraction on the album because it not only is the John Lennon song, but it also features Paul McCartney on bass and backing vocals with string arrangements done by legendary producer Jack Douglas, who worked with John on Double Fantasy. The inspiration to record Grohl's with me, Ringo said, came when he ran into J- Douglas um, and asked him if he had ever heard the Bermuda tapes, which were John's demos from that time. Ringo said he'd never heard all of them. Quote, the idea that John was talking about me in that time before he died, well, I'm an emotional person, and I just love the song. I sang it the best that I could. I do well up when I think of John this deeply, and I've done my best. We've done our best, he said. The other good thing is that I really wanted Paul to play on it, and he said yes. Paul came over and he played bass and sings a little bit on this with me. So John's on it in a way. I'm on it and Paul's on it. It's not a publicity stunt. This is just what I wanted. And the strings that Jack Jack arranged for this track, if you really listen, they do one line from Here Comes the Sun. So in a way, it's the four of us, which is a nice touch for... uh, Ringo to do. Also on the album on various tracks are Joe Walsh, Edgar Winter, Dave Stewart, Nathan East, Ben Tench, Steve Lukather, Steve Dudas, and Ringo's longtime engineer, Bruce Sugar. The album, Ringo's 20th studio album, will be released on October 25th. The hottest musical group in Great Britain today is the Beatles. That's not a collection of insects, but a quartet of young men with pudding bowl haircuts and who spell Beatles, B-E-A-T-L-E-S. In the latest news about the Beatles, the Beatles released another preview from the upcoming Abbey Road box set that's coming later this month. They put the new 2019 mix of Oh Darling and Take Four of the Song on social media. I really like the 2019 mix with the background vocals punched up in the mix. Um, the one outtake that uh, they put out is one I don't believe that was out to collectors before, and it gives you an idea of how far the Beatles went to the final take, um, which was take 26. Um, this follows the posting of the 2019 mix of Something plus the outtake and the instrumental versions of the song that were posted previously. We're hearing that more previews from the Abbey Road set will be posted September 20th and 24th. The set comes out September 27th. Uh, you can find a link for the set on our That's What I Want Beatles store page. Please use it if you haven't ordered already. And prices have dropped slightly since they were originally posted. The box set got some unexpected publicity from an interview that Mark Lewison uh, did in the UK where he discussed a tape of a Beatles meeting from March 1969. The group was discussing a follow-up to the Abbey Road album. John had suggested an album with 14 songs, four each from himself, Paul and George, and two from Ringo. Paul said, I thought until this album that George's songs weren't that good, to which George replied, that's a matter of taste. People have liked my songs, the Guardian Guardian reported. 
John then tells Paul that no one else in the group liked Maxwell's Silver Hammer and that he should consider giving future songs like that to outsiders, for example, Mary Hopkin. I recorded it because I liked it, Paul retorted. Lewison is talking about this tape to publicize his upcoming show, Hornsey Road, an in-depth exploration of the Abbey Road album set to run from September 18th to 14th in the UK. The tape, however, despite the chatter on the internet, is nothing new. It was first revealed in Anthony Fawcett's book, One Day at a Time. The tape, which was quoted on Steve Hoffman's music blog, has some different and more extensive quotes on the blog. John glared at Paul and said sarcastically, it seemed mad for us to put a song on an album that nobody really dug, including the guy who wrote it, just because it was going to be popular because the LP doesn't have to be like that. Wouldn't it be better because we really didn't dig them, you know, for you to do songs you dug and Obladi, Oblada, and Maxwell to be given to people who like music like that, you know, like Mary Hopkins or whoever it is needs a song? Why don't you give them to them? The only time we need anything vaguely near that quality is for a single. For an album, we could do only stuff that we really dug, John said. We always carved up the singles between us, he told Paul. We have the singles market. George and Ringo don't get anything. I mean, we've never offered George B-sides. We could have given him a lot of B-sides, but because we were two people, you had the A-side and I had the B-side. Well, the thing is, Paul answered without even looking at George, who was sitting a few feet away, I think that until now, until this year, which was 1969, our songs have been better than George's. Now, this year, his songs are at least as good as ours. George was then quick to correct Paul. Now, that's a myth, because most of the songs this year I wrote about last year, or the year before, anyway. Maybe now I just don't care whether you are going to like them or not. I just do them. If I didn't get a break, I wouldn't push it. I'd just forget about it. Now, for the last two years, at any rate, I pushed it a little more. I know what he's saying, John said, because people have said to me, you're coming through a lot stronger now than you had. I don't particularly seek acclaim, George said. That's not the thing. It's just to get out whatever is there to make way for whatever else is there. You know, because it's only to get, get them out and also, I might as well make a bit of money, seeing as I'm spending as much as the rest of you, and I don't earn as mu much as the rest of you. Like the others, George was now out on his own musically. Most of my tunes, he said, I never had the Beatles backing me. Oh, come on, George, John sh shouted. We put a lot of work into your songs, even down to Don't Bother Me. We spent a lot of time doing that, and, and we grooved. I can remember the riff you were playing. And in the last two years, there was a period where you went Indian, and we weren't needed. That was only one tune, George said. On the last album, which was the White Album, I don't think you appeared on any of my songs. I don't mind. Well, you had Eric, Eric Clapton he's referring to, or somebody like that, John replied in a hurt to tone of voice. Paul then said, when we get in the studio, even on the worst day, I'm still playing bass, Ringo's still drumming, and we're still there, you know. Interesting tape. Uh, and it's interesting to hear them go back and forth like that on, you know, on their relationships with each other and having to give George some respect, which they really had to do at that point. They wasn't. Actually, we've been at it a long time before that. We've been to Hamburg. I think that's where we... Um, found our style, we developed our style, because of this fellow there, he used to say, hey, you've got to make a show for the, the people. And he used to come up every night shouting, Mac Show. So we used to Mac Show, and John used to dance around like a gorilla, and we'd all, you know, knock our heads together and things like that. Anyway, we got back to Liverpool, and all the groups there were doing this sort of shadows type of stuff. And uh, we came back, leather jackets and jeans and funny hair, macking shower, which went down quite well. The Brian Upstein Statue Project will be officially launched on September 19th in Liverpool. The product is being launched to create a, quote, lasting legacy to the man fondly known as the Fifth Beatle, unquote. Um, 
it uh, will take place at the Brian Epstein Theater. Um, sculptor Andy Edwards is best known for his statues of the Beatles at Pierhead, Liverpool. He's been commissioned to create a, a statue for Brian Epstein. He's produced a clay bust and a maquette, which will be revealed at the launch. Joey Molland of Badfinger is currently in the studio working on a brand new album. He's enlisted Grammy-winning songwriter and producer Mark Hudson, who worked with Ringo, and Grammy-winning engineer Mario J. McNulty to work on the album with him. I've wanted to make this album for several years now. The songs are solid and quite catchy. Many harken back to that power-pop rock sound I began my career with. Molland has a page on Kickstarter to help fund the project, and you might want to take a look at it. And Abbey Road on the River, which will take place May 20th through 25th, 2020, in Jeffersonville, Indiana, has announced its headliners. They are Tommy James and the Shondells, The Little River Band, uh, The Circle, Lawrence Juber, and they'll also do a recreation of the Love Album. Plus, they'll have the usual group of Beatle tribute bands that makes that show so popular. Tickets are available on AROTR.com. Here's the latest Beatles chart news for the Billboard data September 24th. The Beatles 1 is down, is at 88, down from 74. Uh, Abbey Road is at 100, down from 80. On the vinyl chart, Abbey Road is at 10, down from 4. And Sgt. Pepper is at 21, down from 18. On the Artist 100, the Beatles are at 95. On officialcharts.com in the UK, Beatles 1 is at 38 this week, down from 32 last week. Some of the albums in history released this week on September 9, 1971, John Lennon's Imagine. September 11, 1967, Chad and Jeremy's off Cab- of Cabbages and Kings and the Beach Boys' Smiley Smile. September 12, 1969, Through the Past, Darkly, The Rolling Stones. September 13, 1965, Manfred Mann's My Little Red Book of Winners. September 13, 1972, Close to the Edge by Yes. September 15, 1966, Jefferson Airplane Takes Off. September, September 15, 1967, Something Else by the Kinks. And September 15, 1975, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. But a special mem mentioned to September 13th, 1999, which was when the Beatles' Yellow Submarine song track was released. It was a fairly innocuous release at the time, but it really tested the waters for Beatles remixes, and the excellent sound and the positive reception from the fans proved that the Beatles could tinker with the catalog and the fans would buy it, and we certainly have. And here's what you'll find streaming out there. Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years is on Hulu. The Beatles 1 is on Roku. Good Old Frida is on Hoopla. A Hard Day's Night is on the Criterion Channel. Strange Fruit, The Beatles' Apple Years is on Tubi, with ads. Nowhere Boy is on Netflix and Showtime. The U.S. vs. John Lennon is streaming on Voodoo, Tubi, and Pluto TV. Uh, classic albums, John Lennon, the Plastic Ono Band, is on Amazon Prime and with ads on Tubi. Lennon Naked is on BritBox. John and Yoko, Above Us Only Sky is on Netflix. Paul McCartney, Rock Show, is on Sling. George Harrison, Living in the Material World, is on Netflix and with ads on Tubi. Life of Brian, with a cameo by George, is on Netflix. The Who, The Kids Are All Right, with a cameo by Ringo, is on Amazon Prime. And Candy, which stars Ringo, is on Tubi. That's it for now. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com, Beatlesarama, and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world, and check out our That's What I Want Beatles Store page also on Facebook, for gift ideas for yourself or your favorite people, and where you can find links for both can- contributing editor Candy Leonard's Beatleness book and my Meet a Monkey Davy Jones ebook. And look for our next show, and please subscribe. We will be looking for you. Till next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying, Be seeing you!
keep that one. Market fab.